All right, today is Flag Day. Now, I said, uh, actually, I said on Monday that it was this past Sunday, but I was mistaken. I guess I was a bit too eager to celebrate the American flag, but not as eager as the White House to celebrate the ever-changing flag of spiritual rebellion that they hoisted at the White House over the weekend. The American flag that we celebrate today unifies. It unifies Americans. Where the pride flag divides, and it celebrates destruction. Now, you, you may have seen this or heard about it, but at the largest ever pride celebration at the White House this weekend, a man who now claims to be a woman and apparently went to great expense to create breasts to show that he showed them off. Maybe they were paid for at tax dollars, I don't know, but he wanted to show the world on the White House lawn. Now, next to him was a woman who now claims to be a man who removed her shirt, exposing what had been removed. Now, what came to mind is I saw these pictures, which were blurred out, was, you know, this would have been an illustration for an illustrated Bible depicting Sodom and Gomorrah. That's probably what it would have looked like. Now, some of you may take that as being harsh, and it may be, but it's reality. Now, yesterday we covered a measure, and this is the White House, the, the, the White House, the lawn of the White House. I mean, it's pretty astounding. Well, yesterday we covered a measure in California, Assembly Bill 957, known as the Transgender, Gender Diverse, and Intersex Youth Empowerment Act that would amend California's family code to make it clear that affirming a child's gender identity is part of the health, safety, and welfare of the child, which means a child could be taken from their parent if that parent does not affirm a destructive notion that has been placed in the child's head by the media or by their school's indoctrination. If somehow this destructive notion is in their head, it cannot be countered with the fact that God created them special just as they are. If a parent does not affirm it, that child could be taken away. Folks, I, I, I cannot be more clear about this. This is a red line for me. And it should be for every Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian in America. You cannot be a spectator and watch this and say you love the Lord and his word. Now, yesterday, the former Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, was asked about these moral cultural issues on CBS. And this is what he had to say. Clip five, please. I'm not a culture war guy. Uh, I think it's really polarizing. Look, I, I, on some of these issues, I'll side, uh, you know, with the anti-woke crowd. But to me, I'm worried about a debt crisis. I'm worried about, you know, the future of our country and, and China. There are big policy problems that we need to tackle if we want to have a great 21st century for this country. Excuse me? You're not a cultural war guy? Um, well, you know what? He's actually speaking truth because when he was House Speaker, he did nothing to advance the cause of life or the family. And with his focus on economic issues in the 21st century and beyond, let me just tell you, um, there is no future without a moral foundation. That's the reality. America doesn't have a material problem. It has a moral and a spiritual problem. I mean, you can see that. Our economic problems are getting worse. Why? I would argue because of our moral and spiritual foundation has eroded. And our economy has nothing to stand on. Lawlessness runs rampant in our streets. Well, California is not alone in attacking parents' rights and families. This week, the governors of Maryland and New York City issued executive orders declaring their state sanctuary for gender mutilation of minors. The American Medical Association's they strengthen support for gender mutilation. And this, of course, is while uh, countries in Europe are dialing back this stuff because they realize how destructive it is. But America's left is marching on. Nevada put a new law into place this week that requires health insurance companies to pay for gender mutilation. Illinois, a new law favoring sexually explicit materials in schools. So this is not isolated. What is happening in California is not isolated. This is coming. If it's not already there, it's coming to your community. It's coming to your children. It's coming for your children. Joining me now to discuss this is Meg Kilgannon, Senior Fellow for Education Studies here at the Family Research Council. She sure served 
in the Department of Education during the Trump administration. Meg, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Tony. So let's start by discussing California's AB 957 that uh, came out of committee yesterday. Let's talk about what it would do and its ramifications. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's a terrible bill. It would allow for the state to take away the children of parents who do not affirm a child's sexual identity as the child declares it. So essentially, it completely reverses the role of the parent and the child, and it supplants the parental role with the state. And when I hear comments like that from, from former Congressman Paul Ryan, it, it, it just, it's so tiring to hear politicians talk this way that implies that somehow if I'm objecting to that kind of, of measure in this quote unquote culture war, that I'm, you know, hateful or I'm the one who's the problem. I'm I'm not, you know, affirming people or loving people or what have you. And it it just it's exactly the kind of, of, of thing that has caused parents to literally, you know, battle the man the battle post right. in the in the culture war, go into school board meetings and speak out against this kind of, of ridiculousness. Right. Not, not, not to mention, dangerous. not to mention that his comments like that suggest that these are not important issues. More important is what our interest rates are and what the inflation rate might be. I mean, I, I don't think any of us really care about what the interest rate is. If not when your children, children are taken not from when your, not when your children have been taken from you and enticed across a state border and and mutilated through surgeries that are being done. And that's what California is advocating. That's now what New York is advocating. That's now what Maryland. And we've actually talked about this, what's happened in Maryland, where we've had children taken away from parents, put in places where they've been sexually abused by the very ones who are supposed to be protecting them under the guidance of the state. Right. And this this is the thing that that when I look at these news articles about this and you can see a map that's presented by a newspaper that has all of the states that are protecting children from being prescribed puberty blockers or gender affirming surgeries because they are untested. And you see those states in red like like those states are the dangerous ones. And the states went like California and Washington State and Oregon, where they will take your children from you for not going along with this, or states like like um, Vermont, where you just have that case of the dad and the daughter who the daughter didn't wanna have a boy in the locker room with her changing, and the dad who was the soccer coach lost his job because he defended his daughter. You know, those states are in gray, as if there's nothing going on there. There's no problem there. Those are the, everybody should not be worried about what's happening in those states. It's now, the states that are in red or yellow that are the problem. Right. It's just completely backward. And now, that is the kind of, of noise and, and aggravation that parents have to deal with as we're just simply trying to maintain our parental rights and protect our children and other people's children, too. I, I don't think that I need to make this point, but because it's become so pervasive that, I mean, everybody sees it. But I still think there are some that think, well, you know, it's not going to happen to my kids. You know, uh, you know, we, we, we go to church, um, you know, and, and, and their, their kids may actually be in a good school, might even be in a private school, a religious school. And they say, well, this isn't going to happen to my kids. But when we're talking about what's hap coming out of California, where the state would say, if you don't affirm this notion. In fact, I was just talking to a friend this morning who's who's homeschooled his kids most of their lives, um, but they went to a, a public school for, for a couple of years, and, and these notions got in their head, and one of the kids thought they were transgender. And, and under this setting, and of course he's been able to you know, minister and bring that child back, but under this, if you don't affirm this minor child that has this notion in their head, your child could be taken away. Right. And it's, it's um, you know, there was just this article in the Wall Street Journal earlier this week or late last week that talked about how Instagram was just a hotbed of 
child pornography and that there were hashtags. And once you access this material on, on Instagram, whether it was on purpose or not on purpose, then your algorithm was altered and this material would be fed to you, right? And so it doesn't even take a brief experience in a public school for children to be uh, um, enticed away by this or for anybody to be enticed away by this. And when you see that that article in the Wall Street Journal, it was an, a, a joint study with Stanford University, all of the right people, all of the smartest people have identified this as a legitimate problem and you hear crickets from anybody about it, you see that we live in a culture that tacitly accepts the premise. And that is the only way that the state can then come in and take do something as outrageous as, as say that they should take children away from parents. So we really need to understand what we're up against. There's a billion dollar porn industry that is out there trying to get access to our children. You have a governor in Illinois, like Governor Prisker, who just this week signed a piece of legislation that will cut the funding of libraries who don't allow pornography in the library system for children, explicitly for children. <laughs> you know, it's like clown world some days. It, it, it beggars belief. Well, but here it, we find ourselves. This in is this where... Situation. This is where you and I agree with President Biden. There is a battle for the soul of this nation. And, and I use it because it's really a battle for the soul of our children. And we need to realize that this, is, this has eternal significance and consequences. And, and this is where parents need to wake up and, and realize that this, this is an unparalleled, we, we talked about unprecedented in terms of the charges against uh, Donald Trump at the beginning of the program, never happened before. We live in a time that is unprecedented. We've never seen this type of a chat attack on children, on the rights of parents to protect the children as God has instructed them to do, to teach them, to train them, uh, to nurture them. All of that is under attack and we cannot be passive this is not a time to be a spectator. We have to be a participant in exercising our roles and defending those roles. Absolutely. I mean, it, it feels like, you know, the, the battle was, you know, you will bake the cake, right? That was the initial start after Obergefell. You right. will bake the cake. You will acknowledge and affirm that we are legally married. And even as a Christian, you will bake our cake. And now the message seems to be, you will see the nudity at the White House and you will have your children look at the porn in the libraries. You will affirm this lifestyle. You will affirm this identity. And as Christians, we simply, we, we can't out of love and concern for people. Three things. We can't. Three things we must do, Meg. What are they before we run out of time? Pray, vote, and stand. Unpack that. You got a little more time than that. <laughs> Unpack that for us. What's that look like? What's that look like for a mom? Well, I, I mean, are we ever really off our knees as mothers? I think we're just constantly in prayer for our children every minute of every day, right? And uh, elections have consequences, and we're seeing that. And you can have a, a blue state governor who's got a wide, a, a huge margin of victory, like in California or Illinois, and they can do crazy things. But you can also have a president like Joe Biden, who's elected by a very narrow margin, who's doing even crazier things on a national level. So elections really do have consequences. And in the end, when when we don't maybe win at the voting booth, we do have to stand in our communities and be an example of Christ's love and of truth and, and humility, uh, um, you know, there but for the grace of god go i this can happen to anybody's family yeah. this 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 thing can ensnare anyone's child and we we really have to be uh vigilant and and be the most important relationship your child has it needs to be with you and with god absolutely and my heart breaks for those parents who have seen their children targeted and, and literally stolen from them as their innocence was stolen. Meg Kilgannon, thanks so much for uh, joining us. Always appreciate talking to you. Thanks, it's great to be here.